Imagine a time in TFT where every unit could be a carry and every unit could be a support. A world where Alistair was the best unit and Yumi really lived up to her name as the most toxic thing League of Legends has ever produced. This was set 8 and we're going to go through all of the glitz and glamour and let you feel that pain but also beauty one more time. So where do I start with set 8? And if my comments are anything to go by it will be a set that will go down a lot of people's hearts. A set really defined by what augments could be and what they could achieve. But there have been some distinct differences between the augments back then and what we have now. The most important being that every champion had one in set 8 and they were either support or carry augments. The support augment gave you most of the time a team wide effect and the carry would buff the unit that you chose. Although in concept hero augments are great, not all were created equally. For instance, on one hand you have Nasa stacking his way into a literal god through the course of the game. And then you had Talia, which gave you a giant slayer effect. I mean, I get it though, with 60 champions and already a ton of augments to choose from, there's going to be some overlap. But don't get me wrong, Talia didn't need her hero augment. <laughs> Jesus Christ. There were some snippets of brilliance by Riot though in set 8. His design was pretty magnificent. For instance, PvE rounds were modelled on the threat units, which is just an amazing thing that Riot did. Riot created their first ever traitless trait, and they were fantastic. If only for the fact that Rymas finally made it into TFT. And this is also the set where they brought the component anvil into the game, which is a quality of life feature that many people praise your mighty morph for on a daily basis. Gone are the days where you would get completely mort dogged at Raptors. Now at least you have some agency. Now let's get stuck into the traits and starting with the most threatening. <laughs> Threat units were amazing. They were traitless and quite strong, so you always felt good putting them in. And they fit into a lot of comps by being traitless. And they all had distinct abilities. Cho'Gath fired his laser. Aurelian Soul fired a comet from the heavens. Belveth just dashed around the board. Ramus existed and also scaled off armor. Urgot would summon a waterfall and dredge up treasure. Velgos was probably supposed to be Malzahar, but he had a single target CC. Zek was just a solid tank you could put into any comp. And Fiddlesticks was a literal jump scare. Oh yeah, and do you remember the item Lucky Dice? Well, shit, that was removed because of the threat. The the threats added an extra dimension to the game, as well as a ton of flexibility and decision making. I would love to see something like threats make a comeback. Not like Wukong, but like the whole idea. There was a trait that was called gadgeting, and that trait was a miss for a little while, but slowly managed to pull itself into relevance. But the idea of a temporary item and some damage reduction is kind of cool. But the star of gadgeting was Nunu, but more about him later, and it wasn't really gadgeting that you played him around. Underground was a smash hit for many, another one of streak type traits that allowed you to go deeper and deeper. It was thematically kind of cool actually, because you know, you're going underground to get the loot. And it was a great way to play, get on tier one, and you could go infinite and get an insane cash out. Plus the ability to see what items you were going to get allowed you to make a lot more decisions based on whether you wanted to cash or not. Which is great for player agency, although in my opinion, I still like the fortune idea where you just get random stuff. You could gain stacks even from winning, but seriously, if you could win with underground as your primary trait, you probably deserve it. But you also had to pick your own adventure traits like Admin that allowed you to choose what you wanted the trait to be, sort of like a mirage that you pick for yourself. Call me crazy, but that's kind of neat. It brought us the first ever sort of carry Soraka, as well as some shenanigans with LeBlanc. The biggest introduction, at least in my opinion, was Mecha Prime. A brand new spin on Mech Pilot from set 3 and 3.5, which was honestly pretty amazing. You sacrificed two units to the Great Mort Dog and got one Mega One instead. And you chose it. Rather than just getting a Garen, you could choose any unit that had the Mecha trait, even the Emblem. Which led to each one having their time to shine. From Reroll Draven to Wukong. Even Leona, if you really fancied it, you had options to choose from. Now, could they do something like this in the future? I hope so. Mech is always cool. And since set 8 was like a literally down to earth version of set 3, of course, Star Guardians made their return, generating mana from all sources, capping out with Syndra. But let's be honest, Syndra was not the star of Star Guardians, it was Echo and. You, me, but more about them later. Supers was the reroll trait that really elevated so many other comps. It was a nice attempt at reroll, but it was the other units that you played around that were so insane, especially Lee Sin. He had his moment in the sun. Hacker was Riot's first ever attempt at a different kind of assassin trait. This time, you chose one unit that would go into the back line, and honestly, it was unintuitive and kind of strange. And it marked a time for Riot would start to phase out true backline access traits for the game, which I, for one, am pretty sad it's over. But you know, you did have a choice between LeBlanc and Zed, and you could actually just have Zed be an assassin and a duelist at the same time, which is nuts. We had Heart, which had some of the wildest units. I mean, take Syndra. 
I made a whole video about her, but she was Heart on Star Guardian as a five cast, and she still played second fiddle to Echo and you and me pretty much the entire set. The kind of flex trait was mascot and civilian as well a little bit. Having units that you could just toss in, such as Yumi, Alistair, Nasa, and Nunu, all of these units were amazing at different points. Some had incredible augments that I'll get to later. It was a trait that you could just put it into anything and do kind of well. It's just that something you just added. Plus, he used Alistair, who is probably one of the strongest units of the entire set. And he came with Aegis, a trait that gave you bonus MR that also was kind of with Echo. And let's not forget Echo, who was basically just the best forecast for the majority of the set. He was in almost every single meta comp and he would absolutely win every game for you if you found him as a two star with the right items. One of the traits I thought was particularly interesting was Prankster. It's a bit like a Naruto substitution jutsu cosplay, but with units like Echo, it worked wonders and maybe Echo was good. Then you had Laser Corpse, which was kind of like, tee -hee, here's some drones that fire some lasers to kill your enemies. But you did have Zed to play around and Zed did have his own Laser Corp comp, but yeah, that'll come in a bit. Then there was Oxforce, pretty much the most unhinged and disgusting trait in the set, where the units gain attack speed based on missing health, but that wasn't necessarily the problem. It was the fact that they became immune to damage at one health for a brief period of time, allowing them to get all of the attack speed and still for one more second. Now that might not seem that strong, but if you have, I don't know, a trait like Sure Shot that scales with seconds, all of a sudden Aphelios is doing mega damage, or maybe with Renegade, a trait where the last unit alive gets a huge buff, Viego could be the last one standing and becoming passable to deal with. But the best one for me, at least, is Civilian, which is sort of like mascot, but for mana. And with Janna existing, you could put her into any comp and it would work. Seriously, Janna was one of the best units ever printed in TFT. For one, you had her trait forecaster that allowed her to give stats to your units based on the weather. If it was sunny, you got a big shield. If it was rainy, you got mana. If it was windy, you got AD and AP. Her augments were also extremely good. The support one gave you 100% increase to the forecaster's effects for your whole team, which is strong and the carry one was a refund on mana for enemy hit so that means you could spawn quite a few tornadoes put her in with pretty much any other mascot unit and then your team's just generating mana hey you play star guardians haha <laughs> now you've got double mana for everyone but there were some other notable units as well like aphelios who kept out ox force and sure shot which was a trait that gave you attack damage over the course of the fight he gave you the option to choose different guns with his trait arsenal and those guns gave you different abilities but let's be real the only one that you ever chose was the cc one his augments were either the ability to shred armor that stacked or to give your entire team extra ad over time almost like double dipping the sure shot effect Nunu was a roaming style champion, which gave movement speed that scaled with attack speed. But the more he moved, the bigger the snowball. And with Yumi's support augment zoomies, you could get insane movement speed on Nunu, leading to some wonky interactions. And his augments were either giving him more AP every few seconds, or a small AP bonus and mana per second. Either way, Nunu was never a support, he was always the carry. You had Leona, who was set 8 solution to the super tanks. Instead of having a one hit kill, you had a firing down the lane laser to kill one champion, make her a mech. She's a big girl that rains fire down, but you never really did that, you kind of just had her there. And maybe with some items, she just kind of wins you the game. Her augments were fine, not the best. The reduced mana on her solo fair was a nice addition, and her support augment being a flat 30 damage reduction is nice, but it's not game breaking. There was Mordekaiser who brought down the house, which is awesome. He really camped out some boards, especially like laser corpse. His carry augment being a scaling AP over the course of the fight meant that if you got that, he would be an absolute monster. His support augment was a bit of shred which i guess is fine i already mentioned fiddle but he would just kind of stand there menacingly and it was time for the jump scare and i'm surprised we never seen a fiddle like this before or since because frankly it's an amazing take on fiddle with his augments he could either gain more health on ally death making his corrupted trait feel a lot stronger or he could give his allies a bit of corrupted stacks which is always good <sighs> And then there's Syndra. Oh boy, Syndra, such a cool idea, such a cool concept, but she was only just useful and at the same time completely useless. She functioned a lot like Set 3 Thresh, but without the Mana Reaver or without the Chrono. So she literally just existed for Echo and Yumi, which she did fine, but Syndra was never a carry or really, she was a pretty average five cast. I already did a video on Syndra, so if you want to go check that out, make sure you do. I got some of the tidal wave that would generate you items and pretty much everything. He was quite the champion of TFT. His augment would dredge up extra treasure or give some attack speed to allies and 
also a little bit of AP. But there's more than just a five cost, and <laughs> we're gonna highlight the fact that there were so many units in this set that were just disgusting, and so many disgusting comps that I'm now going to gently remind of you so you can all feel that pain again. We have Sling Italio, which might give people some PTSD, utilizing Echo Frontline, who pretty much every Metal Kong utilized Echo Frontline at some point, because that champion was absolutely disgusting. You just needed some Star Guardian and some Spell Slingers and 3 Star Talia, and you were absolutely good to go. Honestly, 3 Star Talia was ridiculous. You didn't even need a carry organ or her support organ, you just needed her. Then there was a LeBlanc reroll to Electric Boogaloo, and this it had been a while since we had seen a LeBlanc takeover, and set 8 brought a whole new spin. This time, you could give her a shitload of the right admin bonuses and let her go to town on the enemy team with the hacker trail. Get her augment, which gave her more sigils based on how many were cast, and she becomes a rapid fire nightmare. Kaisa, recon reroll with Vayne, Ramus, and Cho. Hey, recon was cool. A dash and a plus two range is kind of true to thematic, but what wasn't true to thematic was how absurdly strong and in your face Kaisa was. She was not a recon unit, she was a full on monster you couldn't catch and would straight up annihilate your board. Just roll on seven, get the Ramus, get the Cho, because hey, they were also three costs and it's just at that point you win and to pair with Kaisa you had Vayne who was no slouch in her own right in fact one of the best rerolls of the set it's just the the two of these together was just so absurdly strong Animal Squad and Misfortune and nothing says a set three recycle like Misfortune using AP items blowing up the entire enemy team and if you got the silent support all one which gave you a little bit of mana hey guess what she literally casted instantly and there was some niche Anima Squad reroll builds with Riven and everything, but they weren't exactly like as good as some of the other ones, but you could still play them if you had the right augments. Riven was fine, she was okay, and Misfortune was good too. Then there was, how do I describe, how, how do I put this? There was a Yumi reroll build. I don't, I don't know if people remember this one. Like, do you, do you remember Yumi reroll? I'm pretty sure it's quite niche, right? No? Oh, right, yeah, no, it was the most toxic thing in the set. Some people might even say of all time, but I don't think those people played the first couple of sets. Don't get me wrong, Yumi was pure filth, and I despise that champion in League and in TFT, and she completely ruined set 8 for me. Being able to be Star Guardian and Heart and her hero augment that allowed her to naturally create, she became a force of fucking nature and there's nothing that you could do. Hey, get a Janner in and she's just rapid firing these little fucking things that loop around and kill your goddamn backline. Oh, you get rid of this cap, Riot. Hey, but you know, let's, let's go into something a little bit less broken. Or oh, more broken, less broken. Viego who used the Ox Force and the Renegade traits. Throw in some Aegis, throw in some Ox Force, and you have an unkillable monster that doesn't die and kills absolutely everyone. He's kind of set 10-ish, but with extra steps, but he could absolutely win you the game very comfortably. And then there was another Spell Slinger build with Sona, which was basically like Talia reroll on a budget. If you couldn't hit the Talia, you played the Sona and it was all fucking good. Why does the Spell Slinger thing exist? Why did they bring it back in set nine as well, by the way? And then there was Zed, who, <laughs> who used both his Hacker and Laser Corpse, and sometimes Duelist as well. And Zed was probably one of the most flexible forecasts in the set, because you could either play him in Hacker, Laser Corp, or Duelist. He had backline access, he would just breeze through the backline and kill absolutely everything. Get an Edge of Night, and there's literally nothing they can do. I told you at the beginning of the video, any champion could be a carry, and there's none more so than Soraka, who in a rare moment in Riot's Judgment, actually managed to get away from this Banambulance identity and turn into a banan carry. Oh god. But anyway, if you got the right admin and the, her carry augment, you were quite strong and you could absolutely take over the game. No one expected that banana. You had a reroll Ash build, but that was basically just Ash with a bunch of bruisers and she went to town. You had Samira, who was basically your four cost go to AD carry that, that worked with Oxforce or Aphelios or any kind of meta comp actually. She basically just was in everything if you could get her. Like she just, she didn't have a comp where she couldn't fit into. Gangplank had a disgusting carry augment. If you got it and three star Gangplank, you basically won the game route, right? Because it was just so disgusting, but it was very quickly enough. We also had Nasus. Now I did a whole video on Nasus, but if you want a slightly deeper dive to the evolution of the, the, the guard. Either way, you could turn Nasus into Trick 2G and allow him to snack through the course of the game and breach those gates. 
and there was this Lee Sin Augment, which got reworked into being a cleanse and a shield, meaning that with just one or two extra Lee Sins, they would scale off each other and become completely unkillable. It was most correct to actually just play more Lee Sins than actual units, which is not fucking good. We had Blitzcrank, who had a great Augment, where he would just get more duration on his ability with more units attacking him, put him with a Nash and go into Laser Corp. He would keep you alive long enough for the lasers to do their job. Furious Hero Augment would give HP on hit, which was pretty crazy, and almost always one that you wanted. It's, it worked alongside with Viego and Oxforce, as well as some of the Gangplank builds and everything. It was just a really flexible thing, and Fiora kind of just sprinkled into some pumps, kind of like the cherry on top. Camille with a carry augment that basically let her generate a shield worthy of the Greek gods themselves, scaling practically infinitely with her AD, and you could get her support augment which gave your entire team a 15% damage buff that increased by 5% on champion death, hello riot. Draven had a moment where his reroll was taking over a ladder, especially early on. You turn him into a mecha and he had this big spinny axe boy that just killed everyone. It's also made him an absolute beast. And also, if you would have done a different approach, you could choose Set, who had a controversial augment, which would knock multiple units off the board. And in that vein, there's also Wukong, thanks to his zero augment, giving him a lot more damage. But check out my video on him for a little bit more of Bonky Kong. I mean, there were a lot more champions in the set. as Kale and Ezreal, but let's be real, they were just trait bots. Duelist as well was just attack speed. That's basically it. Set 8 was a set that really took people by surprise, and it was incredibly polarizing. Some people vehemently hate it, and some people absolutely love it. Let me know which side you sit on in the comments, and don't forget to like the video. I need to shout out Alan, Lavender, and Pjobs, and Yuri, all of which have supported me in my content, especially Alan. And this video was researched in part by him, and as such made possible. So thank you, Alan.